Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this fixed beam. The span of the beam is given as 6 meter. In this beam there is no load. The support B sinks by 6 millimeter. The width of the beam is given as 60 millimeter and the depth of the beam is given as 100 millimeter. The Young's modulus E is given as 200 gigapascal. Let us convert the breadth and the depth into meter. For that we have to divide them by 1000. For the breadth we will get 0 0.06 meter and for the depth we will get 0 0.1 meter. Now let us find the moment of inertia I. The formula is BD cube upon 12. Let us apply the breadth and the depth. For the moment of inertia, we will get 5 into 10 power minus 6 meter power 4. The Young's modulus E is given as 200 gigapascal. We know that giga is 10 power 9 and pascal is newton per meter square. We need to convert this into kilo newton per meter square. We have to divide this value by 1000 so that we will get 200 into 10 power 6 kilo newton per meter square. Let us multiply the Young's modulus with the moment of inertia so that we will get 1000 kilo newton meter square. The settlement at B is given in millimeter. When we divide that by 1000, we will get in meter. Now let us find the degree of static indeterminacy. In this beam, the number of unknown reactions and moments are 4. The available equilibrium equations are 2. The degree of static indeterminacy is equal to 4 minus 2. We will get 2. To make this beam statically determinate, from these we have to remove any two of them. We know that there is settlement in the support B. So we have to select the support B. In the support B, we have MB and RB. Let us release MB and RB. You can see that from the point B, I have removed MB and RB. So the point B becomes a free end. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. Let us keep RB as the first coordinate and the moment MB as the second coordinate. In the previous problems, we have seen these two equations. Here there are two additional terms, delta 1 and delta 2. Since there is settlement in the beam, we have to include these two terms. We know that P1 is RB because that is our first coordinate and P2 is MB because that is our second coordinate. In this beam, there is no load. So delta 1L and delta 2L will be equal to 0. Let us find the delta 1. Our first coordinate is RB. For the vertical reactions, we have to consider the settlement. In the point B, there is settlement that is 0 0.006. It is downwards, so it should be negative. Let us find delta 2. Our second coordinate is the moment MB. For the moments, we have to take the rotations. In the point B, there is no rotation, so delta 2 will be equal to 0. To find delta 1, 1, delta 1, 2, delta 2, 1, and delta 2, 2, we are going to use unit load method. In the unit load method, we have to find the moments M, M1 and M2. We have to find M using the given loads. But in this beam, there is no load. So M will be 0. No need to find that. We have to find M1 and M2. Now let us find M1. Our first coordinate is RB. It is a vertical reaction. For the vertical reactions, we have to apply unit load. You can see that in the direction of RB, I have applied unit load. Now we are going to find the moment M1. 
for that we have to make sections in this beam in this beam there is no load so only one section is enough i have made a section at a distance of x from the point b now let us make a table in the table first let us enter the member we know that here there is only one member that is ba the origin of the section is the point b the limit is 0 to 6 now let us find the moment m1 we are going to find the moments from the point b in this case we have to follow left hand side rule clockwise will be negative and anti clockwise will be positive up to the section we have only the unit load it is acting in the anti clockwise direction so that it will be positive 1 into x we will get x now we are going to find the moment m2 our second coordinate is mp for the moments we have to apply unit movement you can see that i have applied unit movement we have kept mb in the clockwise direction so i have applied the movement in the clockwise direction let us find m2 up to the section we have only the unit movement it is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative now let us find delta 1 1 the formula is integration of m1 square upon ei dx in the integration the limit is 0 to 6 m1 is x let us apply that after the integration we will get delta 1 1 let us find delta 1 2 and delta 2 1 both of them having the same formula integration of m1 m2 upon ei dx x into minus 1 we will get minus x for delta 1 2 and delta 2 1 we will get minus 18 upon ei now let us find delta 2 2 the formula is integration of m2 square upon ei dx for delta 2 2 we will get 6 upon ei in this equation let us apply the values of delta 1 1 and delta 1 2 we can take ei on the other side we know the value of ei thousand 0 0.006 into 1000 we will get a 6 let us keep this equation as number 1 in this equation let us apply the values of delta 2 1 and delta 2 2 we can take ei on the other side 0 into ei we will get a 0 let us keep this equation as number 2 now we can solve these two equations and get the values of rb and mp for rb we have got a negative value that means our assumption is incorrect we assumed that rb would be acting upwards but actually it is acting downwards for mp also we have got a negative value we assumed that mp would be acting in the clockwise direction but actually it is acting in the anti clockwise direction now we can easily find the vertical reaction or a because in this beam there is no load so the values of rb and ra will be same but the direction will be different rb is acting downwards so ra should be acting upwards now from the point b let us take a moment about a and find ma let us assume that ma is acting in the anti clockwise direction rb is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 6 both of these two movements are acting in the anti clockwise direction so both of them are positive finally for ma we will get a positive value that means our assumption is correct it is acting in the anti clockwise direction now using the right hand side rule let us find the shear force values here you can see the shear force diagram now let us find the bending moment in the point a for that we can use a right hand side rule in the point a we have ma which is acting in the anti clockwise direction so that it will be negative 
Now, using left hand side rule, we can find the bending moment in the point B. In the point B, we have MB, which is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so that it will be positive. Here, you can see the bending moment diagram. We are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.